Yorland! Yorlin, no! Come on, fight back! Please, it's just it's just a little extra rent money, nothing to try to kill me over. All I do is try to gentrify the neighborhood, and now you wanna kill me! Real estate in Skyrim is pretty simple. In a typical playthrough, you can purchase several potential homes located in major cities around the province, or you can build your own house if you have the Hearthfires DLC. But what if there were a way to buy other people's houses and charge them rent, a way to become a Skyrim landlord? Well, turns out there's a mod for that. It's called Ari Real Estate Continued, and it allows the player to purchase houses, shops, and inns, set the rent that their tenants will pay, and collect a weekly income. This is Jeffrey. Jeffrey is the proud owner of Helyarkin Farm, north of Whiterun. In my last video, we saw Jeffrey transform what previously had been an overgrown ruin into this highly profitable farmstead, using just his own two hands and a little help from his dog Clover. Now, it's two years later, and Jeffrey is ready to expand his economic influence to the city of Whiterun itself. He saved up a nest egg of 5,000 gold and is going to invest it in the Whiterun real estate market, with the goal of one day owning the entire entire city. Can Jeffrey learn to navigate the volatile housing market and become the ultimate white run property tycoon? Let's dive in and find out. Welcome to Whiterun, the city of opportunity. We get started by staking out the first property we want to buy, the Bannered Mare, Whiterun's hottest bar. Let's check out the for sale sign and see how much it'll cost us. 36,000 gold! Okay, well we can't afford that. Um. We're gonna have to find something cheaper, apparently. Okay, so we can buy Olava the Feeble's house. <laughs> it costs us almost our entire savings, but it's a place to start. Okay, now Olava's house is ours, and we'll charge her the standard amount. It's looking like our climb to financial greatness may take longer than expected, but we'll get there eventually. Back at Helyarkin, we can pick up the earnings from our farm's operations for the day, 850 gold. We own a lovely manor on the farm, which we also built ourselves, and we'll be sleeping there when possible, so we're not spending any money on inn rooms. We say goodnight to our cats and call it a night. Now that we own Olava the Feeble's house, we'll be able to collect her rental income and slowly make up the money we spent acquiring her property. We can immediately collect one rental installment from a safe that's kept in the Jarl's palace, but from here on out, rent will just come in once a week across all our Whiterun properties. So now, our goal for the rest of this week will be to acquire enough money to buy a second property before rent day rolls around. We spent nearly our entire savings to get just one little cottage. We're gonna need another way to boost our income. Fortunately, our farm produces not only foodstuffs, but several herbs and plants that are useful in alchemy, so we brew up some potions to sell. Arcadia's Cauldron makes for a convenient place where we can sell them, right off the Whiterun Marketplace. We're also conveniently married to Isolde, though she refuses to live in the manor for some reason. Maybe she's allergic to cats. She runs her own shop, and we can collect a fraction of her profits to add to our investment fund. <laughs> I could buy Isolde's house, apparently, and charge her rent. That'll teach her a lesson for not moving out to the farm. Then, we can return home and harvest more ingredients to fuel our continued alchemy loop. We craft more and sell more, this time to Bellathor at the General Goods Store. We do some planting work, focusing on growing more ingredients that we can use in potions. On day four, we've gotten our savings back up to 5,000 septums and are ready to buy another property. Okay, Isolde's house it is. And I'll set her rent slightly higher. I mean, like, she runs a shop, it's working and all, I think she can afford it. She doesn't seem to mind us being her new landlord. This arrangement should work out great. Arcadia is happy to continue buying our potions and poisons, and we can buy new ingredients from her that we didn't have access to before. These include swamp fungal pods and canis root, both of which can be used to make some powerful poisons. We also pay a visit to Windhelm, which is home to three different vendors who will buy our concoctions. It's important to diversify our clientele, because most merchants only carry around 1,000 gold or less, and they quickly run out of money. Just in time before rent day rolls around, we've collected 4,800 gold again and can buy another house. 
This time, we go for Uthgard the Unbrokens and charge her the standard fee. We don't want to make our tenants unhappy with their new landlord by overcharging. So, with one week down, we've already acquired three houses in Whiterun out of the seven total houses that are available. We're well on our way to building the real estate empire of our dreams. The weather's dreary the next day, but we're in a good mood because we get to head up to Dragon's Reach and pick up our week's rental money. 1600 gold, okay, that is definitely an acceptable payout for our first week as a property investor. Week two begins with another harvest of alchemical ingredients back at the farm. Then it's time for another crafting session, getting our alchemy level up into the mid 30s. After acquiring 7,000 gold, we consider our options for expanding our business interests. We could buy another house, but I have a different idea regarding a lovely shop called the Drunken Huntsman. It's too expensive for us to buy the property outright, but by speaking to the proprietor, we can become a co-owner in his business. We'll get a cut of his profits, much like we already do with Isolde. We return to our alchemy loop and purchase Carlotta Valentia's house for 4,800 gold a few days later. As the end of the week rolls in, we also buy the deed to Amran's house, upping our total house count to five. We're quickly becoming an important financial stakeholder in White Run's future, and are really making a name for ourselves around town. Well, hello. Well, at least this beggar guy seems to recognize us. On the morning of rental day, we say farewell to our cats and head into town. 1676, okay, that's low. Ah, oh, I was hoping that the new properties we just acquired would count and we'd be able to collect rent on those. I think we got them too close to the deadline, so we'll just have to wait a week on those. Not much of a setback. Week three is when things really get rolling. We pick up a small share of the Drunken Huntsman's recent profits, then get back to work. Our plants are ready for harvesting, including a new mushroom garden we planted last week. They may not be your usual farm crops, but hey, they make money. We're quickly exhausting our shopkeeper's treasuries while selling them as many potions as we can, and soon make enough money that we can become a co-owner of Arcadia's Cauldron. I'm sure she can use the money considering how much she spent buying our stuff. We add a stop in Riften to our trading route to have access to a couple additional merchants, Elgrim, the local alchemist, and Bercy, who runs the Pond Prawn. Returning to Whiterun, we can purchase the house of Clan Battleborn. They're wealthy and influential, so I'm sure they can afford a high higher rental rate. Arcadia offers us a very generous first cut of her recent profits, and we can pick up a few days farming income that's been accumulating while we were away. This gives us the funds we need to also acquire House Greymane. Not to play favorites between the clans, we charge them the same rate as the Battleborns. 4,122, all right, now we're talking. We now own all seven houses that were up for sale in White Run. This means we'll next be targeting the more expensive establishments, like shops and the Bannered Mare. It's week four, and our potion supply is growing at such a fast rate that we simply need a larger market. So, we hop on a carriage out west to Solitude. Surely the folks there have money to spend. We quickly wipe out the alchemist Angeline's gold supply, and then sell as much as we can to the merchant running their general goods store. While we're in town, we seek out a representative of the East Empire Company, Vittoria Vici, and pay her 8,000 gold to open up new trade routes that will increase the income we get from our business investments in Whiterun. Then, we pay a visit to Morthal, which has its own alchemist. Returning home at last, we have several days' earnings to pick up at the farm, bringing our savings back up to 7,000 septums. Then, we pop over to Falkreath. Did you see a dog out there? Uh, what do you think this thing is I'm standing next to? Our alchemy level is high enough now that we can take a very important perk, Experimenter, which lets us learn all hidden effects of our ingredients. This lets us make a much more diverse set of potions, including poisons of paralysis, which are worth over 400 gold each. Now that we've signed the contract with the East Empire Company, we collect a solid share of the Drunken Huntsman's earnings from Elrindir. Then, we can expand our business holdings, investing in Belithor's general goods business as well. Do you get to the Cloud District very often? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you don't. Bruh. I'm gonna own the Cloud District someday. And your house. Alright, here we are at Chill Furrow Farm, otherwise known as Nazim's house. It's only worth 2,400 septums? <laughs> Nazim really thinks highly of himself for someone whose entire farm is worth half the price of a lava the Feebles cottage. 
we buy some alchemy training from our business partner, and then it's payday once again. Right this way, everyone. Dragon's Reach is right this way. Come and pay your rent at Dragon's Reach. Yes, 4722. All right, not a bad haul at all. This week, we made friends with the East Empire Company, expanded our alchemy business to three new cities, and became co-owners in two more local businesses. We're really starting to become a big name around Whiterun, but to buy a prosperous mercantile establishment like the Bannered Mare, we still need to get richer. This brings us to week five. Time to optimize. The most valuable potion we can make with the ingredients we're currently growing is a poison of paralysis made from canis root, wheat, and swamp fungal pod. Let's narrow our focus and start mass producing these. We clear a bunch of planters around the farm growing less valuable crops to make room for more of these three money makers. We sell our paralysis poisons in Windhelm, then Whiterun, and collect shares from our local businesses. Woo! 4,500? You, sir, are my new favorite. Just picking some crops so we can make poisons. The merchants of Skyrim quickly go broke buying just two or three bottles of our poison. As the end of the week approaches, we've worked up 25,000 gold. That's finally enough to outright buy a business. We decide to take Belathor's shop first and become his new landlord. Now, it's probably about time to raise people's rent a bit, you know, to adjust for inflation or whatever. Everyone will be paying us higher fees from now on. Olava may be a retiree, but she has actual fortune-telling powers, like surely she can work up the money to pay a little extra rent. And at last, it's payday once again. Happy payday, everyone. A happy payday to us all, though mostly to me. Yes, 8,000 gold. All right, this is it. This is it, boys. Here we go. We're off to the races now. Time to get serious. White Run is quickly becoming ours. We've purchased a shop, the first of four, that will join our financial domain in the coming weeks. Every citizen of White Run will soon rely on us as either their landlord or their friendly neighborhood poison seller. We are well on our way to greatness. Now, despite everything that we've achieved, I'm starting to sense that there might be some mistrust towards us building among the- You're just rotten. No good. Oh, Lava, please, I'm talking here. Anyway, there might be some mistrust towards us building among the people of Whiterun, and I think I know why. It's because, as their new real estate developer, we haven't spent any money yet on public works projects to improve the city. We should be contributing to developments that improve Whiterun's infrastructure and serve the general population. So we take the rental money we collected this week and put it towards a great public works project, buying the abandoned house of Bree's home and fixing it up into a higher value property. We can just use it as a second home for ourselves. Well, technically, we share Isolde's house in addition to our manor, so I guess this would be our third home. And come to think of it, we have a bedroom in the basement of our farmhouse. So maybe this would be our fourth, actually. But hey, who's counting? Bree's home is a charming home that will give us a convenient place to stay, and this way our citizens will get to see our charming face more often. It's a win for everyone! Over on the farm, we tear down our apple grove to make more room for alchemical cash crops. Attention everyone! This farm is no longer growing vegetables. Now we're growing money. Now this is what a real farm looks like. We swing by solitude again, both to sell our poisons and to buy some new clothes. People keep mistaking us for a common merchant. We need a getup that will make it abundantly clear to everyone that we are a very important person. Ah, yep, that's perfect. We drop by Bellathor's again. I've had just about all I'm willing to take from you. What is it? He's happy to share his profits with us as his beloved co-owner. By the end of the week, we've saved up enough money to buy War Maidens, the local blacksmith shop. <gasps> 17,000 gold! The world will be ours! This was a great week for White Run. We fixed up Bree's home, got ourselves some new clothes, and bought another shop. The money just keeps rolling in. Our speech skill is now high enough that we can take a critical perk, Salesman. This will let us sell our poisons to any kind of merchant in the game. Oh, happy day! Poisons for everyone! You get a poison! You get a poison! Everybody gets poisons! We also get to take an alchemy perk to double the quantity of ingredients we harvest, making our farm twice as productive! Infinite poisons! Our income through the roof. We can now buy the Drunken Huntsman for 24,000 gold. This leaves just one store that has yet to come under our domain. 
As we're spending more and more time in Whiterun, we invite Isolde to move into Bree's home with us. And, of course, we don't want to abandon our cats, so we haul them all on over to Whiterun, too. Welcome to Whiterun, kitties! Oh hey, I can sell Isolde poisons, apparently! There's no way this could end terribly at all! Whiterun's really starting to feel like home now. We are at the centerpiece of its continued development, the economic emperor who everyone else's livelihood depends on. We've done so much to improve the quality of life in Whiterun, but there's still more we could do. For example, a trash removal service. Just look at this garbage out here in broad daylight. No one wants to look at this. So we just, uh, slip a little poison in here and, uh, oh, what was that scream? All right, uh, yeah, simple enough. Mission accomplished. And there we go. We've now made the streets of our city a little bit cleaner. Just like that, we've improved the lives of all our citizens. Well, except his. At last, we can now buy the last merchant shop in the city, Arcadia's Cauldron. We're already a co-owner in her business, but now all Arcadia's rental money will be going straight into our pockets too. Now that we own every shop, we'll be turning our focus to finally buying the Bannered Mare Inn next week. But first, we have some rental money to pick up. Happy rent day, everyone. Our favorite day of the week. Straight this way up to the palace to pay the rent. Ooh, 19,000. All right, that is quite the payout. And actually, hmm, this might give us enough. Yes, we have enough to buy the Bannered Mare at last. The first property that we wanted to buy. We now can finally afford it. Oh, and victory is ours and it tastes sweet. With the mare now under our ownership, we couldn't be happier. Well, that's not quite true, because there's still one very expensive property that we have yet to acquire. It's the Temple of Kinnereth, which is for sale for a whopping 100,000 gold. The people of Whiterun adore this place. I'm not sure why, though. Like, who even is this Kinnereth? How much property do they own? I'm starting to think that whatever it is they do in that temple has something to do with the continued resentment that many of our tenants hold towards us, despite how much we've done for them. Surely it's not because we're hiking up everyone's rent and walking around town dressed like a knockoff Mr. Monopoly. But it's okay, no need to fear. I have a surefire plan to win their affection. People love kids. Demonstrating that we're a family man is a surefire way to gain the public's sympathy. So we decide to obtain a child. Wee! There's this orphan girl in town named Lucia, who we could adopt, but we just got this place cleaned up. I don't think we want some street urchin dragging her muddy little feet all over the place. So we head up to the palace to look for some cleaner kids. Great, there are three perfectly clean kids right here. Sweet, we knocked it out of the park on the first try. All right, kids, welcome home. Here's your bedroom. I hope you like it, because none of you are allowed to leave. I think once we've bought the temple, we'll tear it down and replace it with a statue of ourselves. That way, no one will ever forget their benevolent real estate developer. I hope monsters come and eat you. Here to shame an old woman? Leave me be! You want to talk to me after everything you've done? Now, who could ever think us to be cruel and heartless when we have three kids in our basement? Like, come on! As week 9 rolls around, we're still a long way away from 100,000 septums. Fortunately, we have one last way we can increase our income. It's time to raise everyone's rent up to the maximum levels. Our tenants will be fine with it. They know in their hearts that we have their best interest in mind. Ah! No, Uthgard, Uthgard, no! Stop it! It's just a cost of living adjustment. No need to, no need to try to kill me. I, I'm your landlord. Leave me alone. Okay, okay. So no one would dare attack a man surrounded by children. So, children, children, you are free. You are free. Protect me. You shall act as my human shield. My cute, obnoxious human shields. Ha 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 ha! Yes, now we're invincible. Surrounded by children, no one would dare to challenge us. Ooh, okay, the kids are just going back to Dragon's Reach, where they could tell the Jarl about how we uh, forcibly adopted them. I might not have thought this through. Jarland! Jarland, no! Come on, Please, fight it's back! Just, it's just a little extra rent money, nothing to try to kill me over. Someone help! I'm, I'm being chased by a mad blacksmith. All I do is try to gentrify the neighborhood, and now you want to kill me! Okay, okay, this is my property. I, I own your store, so I'm gonna take whatever I need to defend myself. 
Okay, ah, ah! All right, Tabri's home. Tabri's home, we're gonna hide inside. Isolde, my love. Isolde, Isolde, not you two. What have I ever done to you to deserve this? Except marry you exclusively for the money and then make you pay me to live in your own house. Cats, get out of here, save yourselves. I clean up your streets. I fill your pockets with poisons and this is how you thank me. By the order of the yarn, stop right there. Ah, he knows about the kidnapping, run. If I can't buy it, I'll tear down the temple myself. No, 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 no. I'll raid Dragon's Reach. I'll overthrow the Jarl. I'll... So... ungrateful. Wait, who's gonna take care of my cats?